If you want to be one of the wealthier people in America, you don't have to go out and start the next Amazon. That's 0.0001% of people. But if you want to be one of the wealthier people because you know how to use your money properly, there are some simple steps that you can follow and I'm gonna lay these steps out in this video. For example, if you wanna be on the top half of America, actually, if you wanna blow past the bottom half of America, there's only three things that you gotta do and these are very simple once you understand how to do it. Number one is you gotta track your money. That means you gotta look at where your money is going. Number two is you gotta systemize your money and number three is you got to pay yourself first, meaning you can't spend all of your money. If you do these three things, I promise you, you're going to blow past the bottom half of America because right now about half of America, more than half of America, has less than $1,000 saved up. So if all you do is track your money so you make sure you don't spend all of your money because you have a system where some of your money is going to be saved and some of your money is going to be invested and you spend the rest of your money, that means you're not spending all of your money, you're putting some of your money aside to pay yourself first, meaning you're saving and investing some money, I guarantee you, you're gonna be one of the wealthier people in America because you're gonna be wealthier than half of America just by doing that. But if that's not good enough for you and you wanna understand the steps that you have to take now if you wanna be part of the 2% in America, well then, let me wipe this off. Let's go a little bit deeper and how you can build even more wealth by understanding what you do with your money. First, you gotta lay the foundation. If you wanna build a home, the first thing you gotta do is build a foundation. If you want to build a skyscraper, the first thing you got to do is build a foundation. The difference between your home's foundation and a skyscraper's foundation is the bigger you want to go up, the deeper your foundation has to be. So if you want to become wealthier, you have to build a stronger financial foundation. You have to build a stronger money mindset education, and you have to build a strong foundation on how you're going to become wealthy. Then the second thing you want to do is really build a system that's going to allow you to build wealth. Yes, part of this is the financial side, the money side of understanding how much money you're going to put aside, how fast you can grow this money. But it's also a psychological game of understanding that you can do it and knowing how to use that money strategically. And number three is knowing how to spend your money smartly. Because the goal isn't to deprive yourself of every nice thing in the world. I mean, the whole purpose of making money and earning money and being smart with your money is so you can have nice things. But the question is, how do you spend your money smartly? Because unfortunately, most people are not spending their money smartly. So let me start by talking about number one, how do you lay the foundation to actually build wealth? But before we jump into that, I do have a little favor to ask you because we're finally launching the Minority Mindset Show on podcast platforms across the internet. But I need a favor from you, which is I would love to get some great reviews because we're just getting started there. We don't have a lot of traction there yet. And now as we're starting to put more content there and as we start to promote it, it would be very helpful if we have some nice five-star reviews and if you have some great comments from people that have been listening to and getting value from the Minority Mindset Show. So if you've gotten value from my education, if you've gotten value from my YouTube videos, I would love it if you take 60 seconds, go onto Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever else you listen to podcasts, listen to the podcast that we have there and leave me a five-star review and a comment it would very much mean the world to me. Now with that, let me jump back here, talking about the foundational side of how do you build your wealth. The first thing you want to do on the foundational side of things is you have to believe that you can become wealthy. But not just believe that you can become wealthy, but you also have to believe that it's good for you to become wealthy. You have to believe that it's good for you to become successful. Now, this is two different parts to this, because the first part is you have to believe that it's possible for somebody like you. And in order for you to do this, you're probably going to have to rewire your brain and to re kind of learn the way that you can become successful. Because if you grew up in a household where your parents said, we can't afford this, we can't have these nice things. That's too much money. That's too expensive. That's a ripoff. If you grew up with this sort of mindset, well, what ends up happening now is you grew up thinking that once you make money, that you can't afford the nice things, that those are too expensive, that these expensive things are scams, that they're not for you. And then your kids grow up hearing the same thing, and then they grow up and they do the exact same thing as well. And so when you hear about people talking about generational poverty, but that actually means it's a mindset that gets passed down generation to generation to generation because you grow up in a household and probably a community of people talking about the same things. And if you grow up with this negative association of with money, you are never going to be able to break out of that because you constantly are putting yourself down. And that means you're going to have to rewire your brain to understand that you can become wealthy. Because let me tell you something, in America, you have more opportunities than anywhere else in the world. And anybody it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter who your parents are. Anybody can become wealthy if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to take the risk, and if you're willing to learn. Now, is it easy? No, absolutely not. Is it easier for some people than others? Of course, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. Yes, you can become wealthy, and you have to believe that you can become wealthy. And if this is something that you struggle with, 
if you are constantly thinking, man, it's so easy for them, man, this person had it so easy, man, I wish I had that, what you need to do is go out and read some personal development books. Go listen to Tony Robbins, go listen to personal development podcasts, go invest in your own self-education, your personal development before you do anything else. Because if you have the negative mindset, that is gonna slow you down and that is gonna kill your opportunity to ever become successful because you are gonna be your biggest roadblock, you're gonna be your biggest barrier because unfortunately, the world is full of haters. It's much easier to hate, it's much easier to be jealous, it's much easier to be envious. But when you get over that, and you understand there's a world of opportunity out there, well then you can start seizing that opportunity for yourself too. The second thing that you need to do when it comes to the mindset is you have to understand that it is your duty to become successful. Because unfortunately, in today's society, it is very easy to make this idea of wealth as evil. This can be a political thing, this can be a make myself feel better thing. There's a lot of reasons why people will try to make somebody else look bad because they have money. But what you have to understand here is that money at the end of the day is emotionless. Money is just paper. It doesn't make you a good person. It also doesn't make you a bad person. Money just amplifies who you are. If you give a good person more money, they have a tool to do more good. If you give a bad person more money, they have a tool to do more bad. This is why we need more good people with money and it costs money to eat and it costs money to feed other people. So if you wanna take better care of yourself, you wanna take better care of your family, you wanna take better care of your community, well, you need more money to do that. Sure, you can invest more time, but there's a limit to how much time you can invest. There's no limit to how much money that you can invest. And this is where money can be very useful, money can be very powerful, and this is where you also have to understand that it is your duty to become successful. It is important for you to become wealthy. And this can be, if you grow up in a household where money topics are taboo, you don't talk about money like I did, it can be very tough to say that. But you have to become more comfortable with this topic of money in order for you to go out to actually attract that money and get that money because you have to understand money is just a tool. It's a tool that people use to buy and sell things. It's a tool that people use to have a home. It's a tool that people use to buy food. It's a tool that people use to go on vacations. It's a tool that people use to buy back their freedom. And if you want more of that freedom, you need more of that money. Once you start developing and understanding the mindset side of things, this is where now you can get into the practical side of money, which is where we'll start with the basics. If you don't have any money saved, and the reason why I talk about this is because most of America has no money saved. The very first thing you do before you worry about investing your money, before you worry about paying on your credit card debt, before you worry about doing any of the other fancy stuff, is just put $2,000 in the bank and have that money there to protect you against an emergency. This is not $2,000 that you use to go out and buy a TV. This is not $2,000 that you're gonna use as a down payment on a car. This is not $2,000 that you're gonna use to invest in the stock market. This is $2,000 that is there to protect you against an emergency, in case your car breaks down, in case you lose your job, in case something bad happens. That's what this $2,000 is there for. Now, this is just the start. You're not gonna stop this, this savings fund once you put $2,000 in there, but this is the start. And if you don't have anything in there, you have to save $2,000 as fast as possible because life happens. Maybe somebody gets sick, maybe something happens to your car, maybe you get pulled over by the cops. You wanna make sure you have cash that we don't go into credit card debt when life happens. Once you save this $2,000, and during this phase, by the way, you gotta stop spending money. Like, if it doesn't help you breathe, if it's not there to help you survive, don't spend money on this especially until you do this. The last thing you gotta do is you gotta pay down your credit card debts as fast as possible. Your credit card debts, it's ripping you apart and it's ripping you off. And those credit card debts that you're paying is making your banker rich, it's making the people that are using the credit card getting the perks rich, it's making everybody rich except you. And this is where now, I want you to get out of the credit card debt as fast as possible because this credit card debt is costing you 15, 18, 24, sometimes 27% a year in interest. If you could get those types of returns, you would be a millionaire essentially overnight. But your credit card company is doing it every single day, which is why they are so rich. And this is why I want you to stop making them rich by using your money to pay down this credit card debt. And when you're in this phase, you're gonna feel like you're going nowhere because you're not building savings, you're not building investments, you're not building cash flow, you're not building any assets. All you're trying to do is get to zero. But until you get to here, you're gonna be trying to run up a hill with shackles on you when you don't have any of this built. And that's why you gotta kind of take your foot off of the gas pedal and you're gonna to have to work to now get this paid off and save this $2,000. It's gonna to be tough. And I know sometimes it can take a long time, but you have to pay this off as soon as possible because if your credit card company is constantly getting rich off of you, 
you're never going to have the opportunity to build your own wealth for yourself. This brings me to the second thing that you want to do once you get past the foundation side of things. Systemize. This is where now you want to start using your money strategically that we're always saving some money, investing some money, and then spending whatever's left. The mistake that so many people make, most of America makes, is they spend their money and then they save and invest whatever's left after spending. What wealthy people do, the top few percentage of Americans when it comes to financials, what they do is they invest their money first, they save their money second, and then they spend whatever's left because now you always want to pay yourself first. And by paying yourself first, I don't mean you go to the Gucci store and buy yourself a new wallet. I mean, pay yourself by buying these investments, by buying these assets before you go out and spend this money. So a simple rule of thumb that you can follow is something like a 75, 15, 10 plan. This is something that I talk about a lot in the climb to wealth, which is now for every dollar that you earn, 75 cents is the maximum, maximum that you can spend 15 cents is the minimum that you're investing. 10 cents is the minimum that you're saving. Now, what you're working to do here is you're working to build up a savings cushion because remember, your savings are not there to make you wealthy. Your savings are there to protect you against an emergency. You want to have somewhere between 3 to 12 months worth of expenses put aside to protect you against an emergency. Again, this is not there to buy you a house. This is not there to buy you a car. This is there to protect you when things go wrong. You take the savings, put it into a high interest savings account, somewhere that's generating you some sort of interest, but is there just to protect you against an emergency. It's not there to make you rich. This investments are what is gonna make you wealthy. I'll talk about where you can invest this money in a second, but the spending money is what you use to buy your home. This is the spending money you use to buy a car. This is the spending money you use to buy your groceries. This is the spending money you use to buy your travel. This is the money that you use to go out and spend. So now you're only living off of 75% of every dollar that you earn. You're taking a quarter of every dollar that you earn and you're putting this money to work for you to either save it or spend it. Once you build your savings cushion, once you hit the three to 12 months worth of savings, depending on where you are, like if you're 25 years old, you're not married, you don't have any kids, you don't have any financial responsibilities, you probably don't need a year's worth of expenses saved unless you hate this idea of risk. You're not going to go broke because you were more aggressive with your savings. Now, when it comes to your investments, you have a lot of different ways that you can invest your money. You can invest your money to stocks, you can invest your money to real estate, you can invest your money to your own business, you can invest your money into getting a new career, you can invest your money into books. What you got to understand here is what is your goal? And I've talked about this so many times, but for me, what I want to focus on in this video is for me, my goal is cash flow. So when I invest my money, my number one goal, not all of my investments, but most of my investments, the majority of my investments are generating cash flow. That means I own an investment and it pays me. It gives me a check every month, every quarter or every year. I'm getting some sort of income that's paid into my own bank account. Now, what are the types of investments that can pay you with cash flow? It can be stocks that are paying dividends. It can be ETFs that are paying dividends. It can be rental properties that are paying out cash flow. This is where the bulk of my investments are going because I like that cash flow. Now, I do have some other speculative investments as well that makes up a smaller piece of my portfolio. Those don't pay me with cash flow. My speculative investments are things that maybe they'll go up in value. For example, I invest in startups. Maybe these startups will grow and they'll be worth a lot of money and they'll be acquired one day. Maybe they'll go bankrupt. It's more risky. So it's a riskier piece of my portfolio. It's a smaller piece of my portfolio. But I understand that and I understand the risk going in. But the speculative piece of my portfolio is a much smaller piece of my portfolio. The bulk of my portfolio are things like real estate and stocks. And out of my real estate and stocks, all of my real estate is cash flow producing. And most of my stocks are cash flow producing. I do have some stocks that I invest in that don't pay cash flow, more or less call it on the speculative side but most of my stock market portfolio is cash flow producing. Now, you don't have to go out and invest your money for cash flow. I am a cash flow investor because I like the idea of just working to stack cash flow. Year after year after year, I wanna generate more monthly cash flow. That's the way that I look at my finances because now I can spend this cash flow that I'm generating from my real estate and from my dividends, and I know that I'm gonna get paid again next month and the month after that and the month after that, so I don't feel as bad spending that money. I can go out and use the money to go out and buy nicer things and not feel as bad because I know that that cash flow account is gonna continue getting replenished. But you gotta find what's right for you. Other people like to invest for appreciation where you buy these investments and you hope that by the time you turn 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever it might be for you, that these investments are gonna be worth $5 million. That way now you can start pulling money out of these investments. That way now you can live your life the way that you want. Neither one of these is right or wrong. You gotta find what's right for you. 
I like cash flow, which is why most of this money is going into cash flow investments. And then when I get paid with this cash flow, I am reinvesting that cash flow. That's what I'm doing right now because, well, I don't need that cash flow today, but I just keep reinvesting that cash flow. Most of my cash flow is being invested. I mean, some of it does get used. Some of my real estate rental income I do use, but my dividends, they're reinvested. And you got to figure out now what is the right strategy for you for how you invest this money. You can invest this money into real estate. You can invest this money into stocks. You can invest this money into your own business. If you need more income, you can invest this money to increase your income by reading books, by getting classes, by getting a certificate, by figuring out how you can make more money but you gotta figure out now what is the right investing strategy for you because the right investing strategy for you is not necessarily the right investing strategy for me. This brings me to the third thing that you gotta understand, which is strategic spending. And I do wanna let you know that for those of you who are money nerds, that like to stay up to date on what is happening in the financial news, things like the economy, the housing market, the stock market, crypto, and the global economy, my team writes a daily newsletter called Market Briefs, where every day we're working to break down what's happening in the financial markets into a fun, witty, and easy to read newsletter. You can read Market Briefs in less than five minutes every morning, and it's completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, and you want to stay up to date on what's happening in the financial news, I got the link to how you can join Market Briefs down in the description below, where you can go to briefs.co slash market. That's briefs.co slash market. And the third thing that you want to do is spend your money smartly. And what that means now is just because you have $100 in the bank does not mean that you can go out and afford a $100 pair of shoes. And so there's a few common ways that you want to break this down. Number one is buying what you can afford with cash. That's the first part of smart spending. Because unfortunately, in today's economy, it is so easy to qualify for financing. Now you can qualify for financing by getting a loan from the bank, you can qualify for financing with your credit cards, or now you can qualify for financing with buy now, pay later, or as I like to call it, broke now, broke later. Most people in today's day and age think that it's completely normal to finance things. You wanna go and buy a sofa, finance it. You wanna go and buy a car, finance it. You wanna go and buy your groceries, finance it. Unfortunately, this is becoming more and more normal. But if you want to break out of the system where you're constantly working to get paid just to support your week's income and expenses, then you gotta stop financing things. And that means you gotta buy only things that you can afford with cash, without financing, and that's also without 0% APR. Yes, there's a big argument out there that 0% APR is a way for you to make more money because you get this free money with 0% APR and then you can invest the difference. Well, there's a reason why 0% APR is so profitable. And the reason why it's profitable is because companies know that when they extend you money with 0% APR, that you're gonna go out and buy more stuff. And then when you go out and buy more stuff and you can't make the payments off in time, then they slap you with an incredibly high fee. So now it's not 0% APR, it's 30% APR. And this is where I don't want you to play that game. Buy what you can afford with cash only. The only exception to this should be your home. Now you can use debt when it comes to buying rental properties or in your business, when you want to grow it to the next level, not in the beginning stages, but that is not something that I'm talking about today. We're gonna to focus on the consumer side of things. The next thing is when it comes to affording things, now you're not gonna use debt, is how do you know that you can actually afford it? So if I have $100 in the bank, can I afford a $100 pair of shoes? And this is where you're gonna to have to find the right balance for you. For me, I was very strict on myself because I wanted to stack cash. That way not only did I have cash to buy things that I wanted, that I could buy nicer things, but so also I had cash to purchase investments when I saw investment opportunities. And so what I would do is when I wanted to go out and spend something, I would follow a simple rule of five. If I can't buy five of them, I can't afford one of them, especially if it's not something that I need to survive. So I wanna go out and buy a thousand dollar, very nice watch, I need to have at least $5,000 put aside to go out and buy that $1,000 watch. I wanna buy a $20,000 car, I better have $100,000 put aside to go out and buy the $20,000 car. I know, I made it extremely difficult for me, but you gotta find what's the right balance for you. Maybe it's following a rule of three. Maybe it's following a rule 1.5. You gotta find what's right for you. I'm just telling you what I did, because for me, I wanted to start building my wealth and I wanted to accelerate how much cash that I can keep aside, and that meant I had to live smaller. And then I had to make more sacrifices. But you gotta find what's right for you based off of where you are and based off of where you wanna go. But it ultimately comes down to not spending all of your money. And then when you don't spend all of your money, you're investing some money, that way you can continue to become wealth by owning these assets, and you're also working to save money to protect you against emergencies. When you do that, you're gonna end up as one of the wealthier people in America just because you knew how to use your money and you had the financial discipline to not spend your money. If you can do those things and you stay consistent with it, not just for a few years, but you stay consistent with it for year after year after year, for a few decades, you're gonna end up as one of the wealthier people 
in America just because you use your money smarter than most other people. With the stock buyback, that means that your stock will hopefully go up in price, which increases the value of your investment. Your dividend, on the other hand, puts cash in your pocket today. So now what you can do is you can invest in companies that are paying out dividends, or you can invest in funds that are investing in companies paying out dividends. A couple examples of this are SCHD, 